Hi, welcome to the video in our diuretic series. We're gonna talk about thiazides and potassium sparing diuretics and mannitol. Okay, so let's just kind of review quickly what diuretics do. They increase the kidney's output of urine because we're trying to lower blood pressure or decrease edema. Now, both of those are really good things for our patients. If they have high blood pressure, we give them a diuretic, they put off that extra fluid, they'll have less volume in their intravascular space. That means with less volume in their intravascular space, you know, all your blood vessels, their blood pressure will be lower. Also, if a patient has edema, that's just a way of saying that fluid is not where we want it to be. They've got too much fluid or it's shifting into their tissues. A simple example might be someone who has like those swollen ankles or you press on their shins and they have edema there. We wanna remove that so diuretics can help us do that. So when you're thinking about what types of patients do we give these to, we're gonna give it to someone who either their blood pressure is a little high and we wanna drop that down or someone that we wanna decrease edema. Now, this is just a quick review of the nephron. Remember, each one of your kidneys has a million of these nephrons. I think it is so amazing. Now, we've got a cool picture for you there. You can see the glomerulus. Remember, that's that tangle of capillaries, and it's surrounded by Bowman's capsule. As your blood goes through there, it squishes out the solutes and all that stuff into the filtrate that filters through the rest of the nephron. The nephrons go from the cortex to the medulla of the kidney. Now, the nephron has those three parts. We just talked about the first couple ones, right? The glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. They've also got the tubules and we have the names for you there. So that's just a quick review. We know what diuretics do. We're trying to get rid of um, excess fluid or edema. They'll also lower a patient's blood pressure. And we're gonna talk about the nephrons because that's where the diuretics work. They've got those three parts, the tubules, the glomerulus, which is that tangle of capillaries and the Bowman's capsule. Okay, this is a familiar drawing for you if you've seen some of our other videos on diuretics, but this is if we just kind of stretch that nephron out so you can see how it works. Now you've got, just start right at the top. You kind of put your finger or your pencil on where the glomerulus is, right? That's the capillaries surrounded by Bowman's capsule, and then it goes through to the tubules, okay? So you can see as it goes all the way through, trace that down, do you have the collecting duct and where urine is excreted. So we've taken one little nephron and stretched it out for you to see what the parts are that make it up. Now in the pink boxes, you'll see we've got carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. That's a type of diuretic. You'll see in another box, loop diuretic, closer to the bottom, more in the medulla where we have the box located. You've got thiazides at the top and potassium sparing diuretics over on the right. Okay, we have those there because it's just kind of a reminder to let you know that wherever these diuretic works, that kind of let us know how strong or how potent these drugs are gonna be. The closer you are to the glomerulus, the stronger the effect. So loop diuretics are stronger than thiazide diuretics. Thiazide diuretics are gonna have a bigger impact as far as fluid loss than potassium sparing diuretics. Now, it says K plus, that just stands for potassium. So potassium sparing diuretics and thiazides are some of the diuretics we're gonna talk about in this series. So let's get started with the thiazides. Now you see the loop diuretics, we look at like 25% of the sodium electrolytes are lost there. But with the thiazide diuretics, it's just 5%. So these two are kind of close and they have some things and adverse effects in common, but the loop diuretic is going to be much stronger than a thiazide diuretic. Now you're thinking like, why is she saying that over and over again? Because it's a really important nursing concept. If we have somebody who comes in with just a little bit of high blood pressure, a thiazide diuretic might be one of the first drugs that we try. We likely will not go for a loop diuretic with someone who has just a little bit of elevated blood pressure. We're gonna start with something a little kinder and gentler like a thiazide diuretic. If I have a patient who's super sick and way volume overloaded and they're all swollen up and their kidneys aren't working really well, we're gonna go for something like a loop diuretic over a thiazide diuretic. So write yourself some notes just to remind yourself which one is the strongest, then the next strongest, and the least strongest of these three. The loop, the thiazide, and the potassium sparing. So we have that concept kind of solid in your brain before we keep moving on.